Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years. Matson and the Adai Yutano Program. Harley-Davidson of Guam. Visit our new showroom now located on Route 8 in Mighty. IP&E Fueling Excellence. McDonald's of Guam. I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, located in Tamuning and Dededo. Always open, always local. Ahead on primetime, the lieutenant governor, a no-show at this afternoon's arraignment hearing. More from Superior Court. Plus, the Chamorro Land Trust Commission passing the buck to the legislature. Chris Barnett has the details from Tuesday's meeting. And Nestor Lecanto has the latest from session floor, a pair of bills that aim to kickstart the medicinal marijuana law on island. Holiday and good evening. Well, we begin, Chris, with a call out to the community for help in finding a 55-year-old agate man reported missing. This is the image authorities sent in of Johnny Salas Cruz. He also goes by the name John Calascas. Cruz went missing on September 9th around midday, 12 p.m. Witnesses say he was last spotted walking along Route 2 in Agate. He's 5'7", 160 pounds, and was last seen wearing a blue long sleeve shirt and blue jeans. Now, investigators note he also suffers from dementia. So if you have any information on his whereabouts, you're asked to call police. The number is a call 472-8911 or 475-861516 or 17. Well, he was due in court today, but Lieutenant Governor Ray Tenorio, a no-show. Less than two hours ahead of his highly publicized hearing, the LT filed a waiver of appearance saying he'd be busy in a meeting to help those still left without shelter from Typhoon Mankut. That waiver also authorized his attorney to answer to the charges on his behalf. As anticipated, Tenorio asserted his innocence. His fate will rest with a jury of six in a trial set for early next year. Treat him like any other defendant. Um, he's not a danger to the community or himself. Um, we are here to uh, get this case underway and uh, prevail and establish our innocence. Attorney Thomas Fisher appeared solo in court on Wednesday where he entered not guilty pleas to each of the misdemeanor charges against his client, Lieutenant Governor Ray Tenorio. The charges stem from a gun grabbing incident in Tumon back in July. It's alleged a drunken Tenorio made six grabs at Sergeant Carl Cruz's duty weapon. Fisher also denied his client was drunk. There's no indication that he was uh, any greater or drunk, just the opposite. Tenorio, who was never arrested, must be processed by authorities within 24 hours. He is also court-ordered to stay away from Sergeant Cruz and GPD Special Operations Division, as well as report to probation once monthly via telephone. Lieutenant Governor Guam is obviously not going anywhere. He's not a danger to the community. Um, as far as, uh, obviously, we're going to obey all laws of Guam. We should note KUAM was also subpoenaed to appear at Wednesday's hearing to provide videos to prosecution related to this case. On July 11th, the LT did an on-camera interview with KUAM in which he admitted to drinking two to three beers and seeing a police officer whose pistol like appeared to, to be unsecured in his holster. I was not harassing. I was concerned for his public safety and the safety of the other persons who were there. Um, I did what I thought was necessary because it looked to be an unsafe firearm. According to court documents, investigators with the Attorney General's office made attempts to interview Tenorio on camera. Prosecution noted, quote, upon meeting with the Lieutenant Governor, there was an indication made that the Lieutenant Governor would not agree to have the interview recorded in any way by investigators. At an impasse, investigators departed without conducting any further interview of the Lieutenant Gov, end quote. Tenorio's trial has been set for March 13th. Because the charges are only misdemeanors, the case will not affect his bid for governor in the upcoming election. Accused of trying to bring poison to Guam, the prosecution stating that during a hearing at the District Court of Guam today in the case involving a couple charged for attempting to smuggle eight pounds of meth to the island. The will's now in motion for a new trial. The fates for Raymond Martinez and Juanita Moser will rest in the hands of a new jury. This after a mistrial was declared back in May. This is a new trial. Chief Judge Francis Hedinko Gate would spend hours going over the motions today filed for a major drug case that was first busted wide open in California more than three years back. The case for defendants Raymond Martinez and Juanita Moser. 
The pair, charged back in 2015, was back in federal court several months after jurors failed to come up with a unanimous verdict. Among the motions argued was the defense motion to strike count one of the second superseding indictment, conspiracy to distribute a controlled substance. Defense counsel questioning the time frame whenever the government first mentioned the couple's alleged plan to bring drugs to Guam. As reported, the pair had apparently brought up the idea to a friend and former Guam Customs Lieutenant Henry Alvandia back in 2013, two years prior to the drug investigation that led to the couple's arrest. Defense contends there's no evidence the pair conspired to bring in drugs at that point, rather arguing it was mere chatter. But prosecutor John Black argued against it, saying in court that defense is only sidetracking the issue. Issue. Other issues brought up at today's hearing, whether the source of the meth came from the Mexican drug cartel and concern over the GPS tracking device on the couple's rental car that was apparently tainted with narcotics, alerting the canine officer to the apparent drugs inside. Martinez and Moser's counsel is sticking to their entrapment defense, arguing that it was all a setup using criminal informant Henry Alvandia. The selection process for a new jury and for retrial to begin is set for October 11th. The Tomorrow Land Trust Commission approved voidable leases, and when it comes to null and void leases, they'll be passing the buck to the legislature, Chris Barnett reports. The Tomorrow Land Trust Commission ratifying almost 3,000 leases, and they're planning on seeking validation from senators for the leases they voted to ratify. The CLTC will also seek approval from the legislature for 102 leases that the Attorney General deemed null and void in a May legal opinion. As you may recall, a K-Wave News investigation months ago found employees of the Department of Land Management and their relatives switched places in line, meaning employees and their family members had either received leases or were in the process of receiving leases, while other CLTC applicants waited decades without so much as a phone call from the Chamorro Land Trust. Many of the leases granted to land management employees and their relatives were in the controversial Barragata Heights CLTC property. With CLTC documents showing that several of the land trust lots in Barragata Heights have been appraised at upwards of $400,000 per lot. One CLTC Barragata Heights lot leased to Joseph A. Beneventi has an assessed value of $707,000. Despite questions from CLTC board leadership, the media, leaseholders, applicants, the public and elected officials, the CLTC has not rescinded or revoked a single lease or conducted a further look into whether or not employees use their authority to fast track leases for their family members or for themselves. No leases have been voided. And a policy approved by the board months ago requiring land management and land trust employees to disclose how they're related to lessees and applicants has not moved forward since its adoption. The land trust found that applying the AG's legal opinion and adhering to the rules and regs for the Chamorro land trust across the board would be too problematic for CLTC leaseholders and applicants. Josh Leon Guerrero, one of several CLTC applicants at yesterday's meeting, looking for answers. While some have waited decades for CLTC land, Leon Guerrero, a fairly new applicant. A new applicant, 2015. Uh, but I was told I, I can transfer or um, swap places with my uncle, which I did, and he's a 1995 applicant. Land Management Director Michael Bora, whose sister was slated to receive a lot in Barragata Heights until she rescinded her application amid the controversy surrounding the awarding of leases in that area, proposed rule changes allowing switching places in line and switching application rights. The AG's opinion stated the law does not allow for such practices. These rule changes would have to be approved by senators, including Senator Regine Bisco Lee, who has a pending CLTC lease for a lot in Barragata Heights. Lee has said she took over the application rights for a CLTC lease from her mother, who was a still living 1995 land trust applicant. Months after taking over her mother's application, Lee was awarded a lot in Barragata Heights. The senator hasn't signed the lease yet, according to Land Management Director Borja. Lee had asked for an investigation into the awarding of leases in Barragata Heights. For Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports. A pair of bills meant to kickstart the implementation of medicinal marijuana law are now awaiting action at the legislature. It's been almost four years since the referendum that legalized cannabis for medicinal purposes, but it's never been fully implemented. Nestor Laconto reports. A measure by Senator Dennis Rodriguez would authorize the governor to waive any requirements for laboratories or dispensaries if they slow down or obstruct implementation of the marijuana law. While some express concern about giving up that much discretion to Adloop, Rodriguez says there's precedent for it. Even our Guam Food Code 
allows for the director of public health to waive certain requirements. That was a food code that was adopted by this body, you know? And so, you know, I, I would ask my colleagues to, to really give this some um, good consideration uh, because it's a real um, honest attempt um, to, to provide the tools necessary to get this program moving and get it stood up. But it is Senator Luis Munoz's bill that provides more immediate relief for suffering patients. It allows for limited homegrown cannabis for qualified patients or their certified caregivers. Again, senators had their concerns over how it would be implemented, but Munoz's final plea to her colleagues was about a young cancer victim named Julie who wanted to be married in church weak and ravaged by the disease. And even when the, the priest was asking her to recite her vows, you could barely hear it. And I just imagine if she had this type of medication in that day, maybe, maybe it would have changed the way that day was for her. You know, maybe she could have been able to, to speak a lot louder and more passionate about getting married to the one she loves just so she could receive God. Yeah, I think about things like that. And if we had passed this, and this would have happened back then, which wasn't very long ago when she passed, she would have had that opportunity. So I'm standing here today for her. A vote on the Munya and Rodriguez bills is set for Thursday. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. Thanks, Ness. And it's that time again to bring you more candidates who will be making their way to the general election this November. Joining our Carmen Victoria Chalahi on D18 tonight, Democrat senatorial candidate and incumbent Regine Bisco Lee and Republican senatorial candidate Tello Tadigui. It's your chance to interact with the candidates. Just watch our live stream on Facebook, post those questions in our comment section so we can get it to them. Then join us on the after party as we bring you Adrian Cruz, Sanjay Sharma and James Turbio and our analysts in studio to talk everything election and about how tonight's candidates did on the show. D18 Tonight's coming up right after primetime. Stick around for more news here on primetime. You're watching KUAM. There are more ways to experience Guam via KUAM News. Giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it. From smart devices. Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats. And via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. Cheers to 80 years. It's our 80th anniversary and the gifts are on us. 80 gift certificates, 8 shopping sprees, 8 staycations, and one round trip flyaway for two to Manila. So how do you enter? Cabo's Insurance personal home and auto customers are automatically entered. Non-Cabo's customers may enter by receiving a qualified quote. It's our way of saying thank you for trusting us for the past 80 years. For more details, visit cabos.com slash giveaway or call 472-6816. Cabo's Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years. positively impact um, everybody on the island of Guam. This is my eighth time doing a stretch for a cure race and I'm planning on going to 10. I'm getting ready for the 2K and I'm pumped up. I'm excited. I'm really excited because it's really fun. To come out and join Strides for the Cure. We're here to basically inspire people, get them active, live a, live a healthy lifestyle. Chuck E. Cheese's Guam is not all fun and games. Our pizza is delicious with the freshest toppings, oven baked to order. Try the fresh salad bar, sandwiches, and don't forget our mouth-watering wings. Come and eat at Chuck E. Cheese's Guam. Welcome back. The only standing shelter after Typhoon Mancuda to Stumbo Gym is projected to close Thursday morning. That means the 19 shelteries still there will have to find somewhere else to go. The plus side is that community partners like the FSM Consulate is lending a hand to help even the most challenging cases in need of temporary shelter. Carmen Terlahi has the story. 
The consulate is doing their best to help families displaced by Typhoon Moncoot. Johnny Silvanus, currently the acting council general at the FSM consulate, says they've been visiting the Asumbo shelter daily. But some cases, like Seppi Phillip and her family we met yesterday, are challenging. There were two things. One, uh, she don't own the, you know, that place was... She was advised by the mayor's office that, you know, she cannot go back there. Mm -hmm. The second thing was the well-being of her family, especially the kids, uh, the safety. He says the exchange between the sheltery and a colleague was a, quote, misunderstanding, hoping to clear the air. I don't think it was happen. I even followed up with my colleague and he didn't. Uh, he, he mentioned that he was, he, he didn't say those things. I'm glad that, you know, the individual was able to visit our office this morning so we can assist with the, the last documents that, you know, they're claiming that it's not being, you know, sorted out. That individual, just one of 230 of the 300 shelterees housed in the Estumbo gym who sought help from the FSM consulate. Silvanus wants to assure the public that his office is doing what they can with limited resources to help all displaced Guam residents with documentation, such as I-94s and Guam IDs needed for temporary housing that he says can be costly and sometimes require travel. Uh, these, these, uh Shelteries were in those situations, they don't have the, the, the money to travel. So that really put them in, you know, another situation which even our office are not, you know, able to assist. In the aftermath of Typhoon Moncoot, his office met with the Guam Homeless Coalition to address challenges for the next time disaster strikes. Uh, I'm hoping that, you know, from this time until the next typhoon or next uh, disaster happen, it will enable us to, you know, look into something that we can do to address such um, issue. Despite the challenges, Silvanus is still thankful for the nonprofits like Salvation Army, the Red Cross, and Gov Guam's assistance to help the FSM community rebuild. Meantime, Dedido Mayor Melissa Savaris expects the Astumbo shelter will close Thursday morning, stating that the school children from Astumbo Elementary and Middle School need to use their gym. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Carmen Victoria Terlahi. Thanks, Carm. Well, giving thanks to Korean War veterans for their service, Hannah Kim, a Korean-American visiting Guam, has been traveling around the world and visited all 50 U.S. states, extending her gratitude by laying wreaths at Korean War memorial sites. Wednesday morning, she met seven Korean War vets living on Guam. Family members say 20 vets lost their lives during, world, during the war. To say thank you to my grandpas or the Korean War veterans, but also at the same time to urge, you know, the public, let's not forget them. And let's not forget about their sacrifices. She invites the community to join her Thursday morning at 10 a.m. at the Veterans Cemetery, where she will be laying a wreath to remember the 20 lives that were lost and the Guam veterans who served during the Korean War. October 3rd is National Coffee with a Cop Day. In line with GPD's community-oriented policing strategy, several of Guam's men and women in blue are all at McDonald's of Guam restaurants early this morning. Sergeant Mike, Mike Uggen is with Highway Patrol Division and was at the Harmon McDonald's. Topics were really good. Um, a lot of issues here. Uh, property owners, people that have businesses, they were talking to us about they're having youth problems. People coming in and hanging around in their areas and causing disturbance and stuff. Uh, we have other people that are worried about people breaking into their houses. What do they do? How can they deal with it? Sergeant Uggen says they will take concerns to the chief of police and hopefully come up with solutions. Wow, get, go there and get a cup of Joe. <laughs> no? <Did> I... <laughs> Too much. <laughs> All right, well, sports is next. And first, Jarlin Weather.
How easy is it to earn reward points using the Alpha Plus app? Here, let me show you. Simply register with the all new Alpha Plus app and earn reward points while making purchases at your favorite stores you already shop at. Just present the app to any authorized representative to earn your points. Now that was easy. Alpha Plus, make every day a plus. He fought for his country as a soldier and protected our island as a parole officer. He's a man who prioritizes faith and family. He is James Camacho Moylan, and now he wants to represent you as your senator. James is a businessman with decades of knowledge in health and financial services. He understands what it takes to rebuild our economy, create jobs, and improve health care. But he needs your help. Off a date. My name is James Camacho Moylan, but please call me Jim, and I approve this message. Zizuas Moss, Carlos Camacho Treasurer. Ram Power Days is here, and right now at Cars Plus in Mighty, you can save up to $11,500 on a new Ram 1500. Cars Plus has a great selection of regular cabs, crew cab eco diesels, even quad cabs. 1.99 APR financing is available for qualified buyers. Plus, buy today and receive a Cars Plus value card, where you can get 21 cents off per gallon at all Shell stations. With great power comes great deals. Only at Ram Power Days at Cars Plus in Mighty. Cars Plus, driven by you. Half a day, hungry drivers. Are you spending more time on the road? Shell has teamed up with Wendy's so you can buy fuel and eat free. Just fuel up seven gallons at any Shell station and get a coupon for a Wendy's cheeseburger or chicken nuggets. Or use two coupons to redeem a Wendy's cheeseburger meal with fries and a drink. Fuel up at Shell today because this deal won't last long. Quality service, fuel and food from Shell and Wendy's. The Good Life, all month long on the stations and networks of KUAM. Check the KUAM News app or KUAM.com for all program listings. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. I have a rundown of your NFL games for this Monday. I'll get to that in just a bit. But first off, some footage from this year's Special Olympics Guam bowling event. Check it out. The 29th Annual Special Olympics Bowling Championship featured 119 athletes teaming up in five-person teams. After eight weeks of training, the athletes were able to put their skills to the test, earning medals for their accomplishments. The day started with words of encouragement, the opening ceremonies, and passing of the torch. Each competitor bowled two games with the top bowlers receiving certificates for most strikes and spares. Over 40 plus volunteers and coaches gave their time to help with this year's event. This was the biggest bowling event to date as far as athlete participation. Refreshments were provided by the generous sponsors lending their hands to Special Olympics Guam. Over 1,000 people filled the Raceway Park in Jigo for this year's Trench Challenge event. About 800 registered competitors faced a new reconfigured course, which was slightly longer than last year's. Athletes took on 30 obstacles that included some new events spread throughout the off-road track. There was the Floating Walls, Slosh Pipe Carry, Fastenel Bucket Brigade, Cargo Net Wall, Pegboard Climb, Skull Crusher Rig, and the Stadium Invasion on the Oval Track. Participants also had to scale an array of fence line and navigate through some new trails. Huge shout out to the volunteers and staff who helped get the course ready. They faced some heavy rains and winds the night before that delayed the start of competition. The crew worked hard to make sure the event was a go and the course was safe. Medics and an ambulance were on site during the competition. Let's run through some of the results now. First overall mail went to Tim Wenden with the time of 1:19:37. Brian Johnson came in second at 125.25, followed by Billy Navarrete at 129.15. Top teams, first place, Steel Athletics at 148.54. Second place, But My Hands Hurt at 208.16. Third place, Happy Wife, Happy Life at 216.38. University of Guam's Triton Night sports event is this Thursday at the UOG Calvo Fieldhouse. Trite Night will feature women's volleyball for the first time with the playoffs for the Guam Women's College Volleyball League. Admission to the event is free. 
Doors will open at 5.30 and opening program starts at 6 and the match begins at 6.30. The top seeded and undefeated Tritons women's volleyball team will take on the number four seed Pacific Islands University at 6.30 followed by the 8 o'clock game between Guam Community College and the UOG Tritons. The night is sponsored by the UOG Triton Athletics Department and the 57th Student Government Association, which will include halftime entertainment, contests, raffle prizes, and free t-shirts, food and drinks, and other giveaways for UOG students while supplies last. In soccer news, close to a couple dozen coaches earned the Guam Football Association Skill Acquisition Coaching Certificate following the conclusion of the second course offered this year. Everyone involved in football should take a coaching course, especially those working directly with players at the grassroots level, said Dominic Gadia, GFA Coach Education Development Officer and Instructor of the course. I would like to thank and recognize all the coaches who earned their GFA Skill Acquisition Coaching Certificate this past weekend. They've all taken the first step to help raise the standards of football on Guam. All right, now for your programming news. NFL on CBS this Monday, KUAM TV 11, 3 a.m. You can catch the Broncos at the New York Jets. Keep it locked to the stations of K-105.